Anyone taking a biology lab class has to get basic safety training. You have to get safety training from your lab instructor, and you also have to read and sign a statement that you read. The undergraduate lab laboratory safety training and hazard review for EEB lab courses form, which we will post online and hand out in class. There are several rules that apply to every lab, and the first and most important is there can be no food or drink in the lab. You can't even bring in an empty container and throw it in the garbage. If we ever get inspected and they see an empty water bottle in the garbage can, we can get a fine for that. You're allowed to leave food or drink over by the door or hidden in your backpack, but no food or drink item can be visible in the lab at any time. It makes sense that this would be the case. Even though we don't have any really hazardous chemicals in this lab, uh, it's good practice to get into to not eat or drink in a lab because it always opens up the possibility that you can ingest something harmful. The second rule is that the backpacks have to be underneath your bench. They cannot be out in the uh, outside of that because people are going to be walking around during the lab. They could be carrying glassware or other things, and it would be easier, easy to trip over something, especially in the center aisle. It's also a good idea not to put books or backpacks on your bench because during the course of the lab, you're going to be doing experiments where there's going to be a lot of items on your bench, and it uh, makes it go more smoothly if you keep everything organized and less cluttered. You should know the locations of certain places in the lab. For example, over by the door are safety showers. Although we don't have any really flammable chemicals in the lab, our lab is equipped with a safety shower like most labs. If you set your clothes on fire somehow, you would go over and pull the, pull the handle and it would put out that fire. We also have eye wash stations at some of the sinks. If you get a harmful chemical in your eye, you're supposed to wash your eyes for at least half a minute. Just flood them with water. You also need to know that by the windowsill, we have a first aid kit. It has bandages and ointment for minor cuts. For each lab, there's going to be specific things you'll hear, uh, and your instructor will tell you about those at the beginning of the lab. For example, some labs we will have hazardous chemicals which cannot be thrown down the sink, and we will have a waste container dedicated to that. So when you're finished with the experiment, the, the leftover reagents will go in that waste container. In other labs, we'll have hot plates, and you'll just have to be aware that those hot plates could burn you if you touched them, very often there'll be gloves or tongs that you'll use to uh, add or take away glassware from the hot plate. For some labs, we might require you to wear eye protection. There's nothing that's explosive or dangerous in any way that you wouldn't, uh, nothing that you wouldn't encounter in your kitchen uh, could happen in the lab. For instance, you could drop a plate in your kitchen and get a piece of glass in your eye. The same thing could happen in the lab but because it's a lab, we, we provide safety goggles. Your instructor will tell you when they're mandatory. Most of the time, they're optional, depending on what we're doing. For our majors courses, Biology 107 and 108, lab coats are mandatory. You can pick up lab coats either online or you can buy them in the bookstore, and you have to have your lab coat every, every period. Policy from the main campus is that you come in without your lab coat, you cannot do the lab, and it counts as an unexcused absence. So make sure you have those. You should, if you can, you can leave them in your car or your, or your locker on campus. In terms of how you should dress, we require that you don't have any open-toed shoes, so no sandals. The reason is you could drop something easily on your foot, and if you have an open-toed shoe, it could injure you more. Generally, we prefer long pants and again, a lab coat. And the reason for a lab coat is mostly that we have chemicals that can stain your clothes. So the purpose of the lab coat is to prevent your clothes from being stained. We don't employ any very dangerous chemicals in this lab, but we practice safety as if we did. The only chemicals you're likely to encounter would be 10% bleach, 0.1 molar sodium hydroxide or hydrochloric acid, 70% ethanol, and in the advanced classes or the majors classes, chemicals like DCPIP, which are mildly toxic.
and because of that, for each lab, you'll hear about specific safety instructions for those.